Hi everyone, welcome to another video. As you can see, it's a really cold winter's day here in the studio. Uh, because of the high electricity prices, we chose not to heat the studio at this moment, so it's really, really cold. But uh, that's not gonna stop me from making another video. Today we're gonna talk about five stencils that I think every beginner lure painter should have. Now I might exaggerate a little bit with the word should, Maybe it's more of a suggestion and you can paint really nice stuff with it. And it's, it's quite easy to use, that's why it's uh, focused on beginners. Now the first stencil is this kind of mesh. This is really useful and it's really easy to use. You can fold it up as many times as you want and you can just place it on the lure and just paint through that and you get this really nice um, uneven effect, a really uneven pattern. It's always different every time when you fold it. But you can also wrap it around your lure like so but you can also fold it double and then over your lure and then you're gonna create more lines and then you can use these kind of clamps to put it on your lure now it's very important that these this stencil is very tight on your lure so that no paint can go underneath your stencil so it needs to touch your stencil that's really important second one is very similar this is a shower sponge as you can see in the picture so when you cut up a shower sponge you get this and I always like to cut out a piece according to my lure and also attach that with clamps. Also make sure that it's really nice and snug to the bait. And these are perfect for painting scales because they have a really nice scale pattern and it takes some practice. I got a video or two or three about it. If you watch that and you use this kind of stuff, a shower sponge, you can find anywhere and you'll be painting really nice scales in no time. Now the third stencil that I think is really important to have is one of these art tools stencils. These are great. I will leave a link in the description below. I also sell these in my shop along with the other stencils. These are amazing for doing very natural spots, uneven effects. Um, yeah, you can get really creative with these. You can put them close to your lure. You can keep a little bit of a distance then the lines will be less sharp it will be more cloudy so there's a lot to do with this stencil but the overall patterns of these art tool stencils are really nice um, and they just they give so much detail and depth to your lures and they're very easy to use you just have to put them on your lure spray a little bit of paint through it and you got a result the fourth stencil is this little guy it's really small but I really like to use it. You can just fold it up as many times as you want and just like the previous stencil, use it to create an uneven pattern, some little spots, a model effect, some some little dots here and there. It's um yeah, it's very easy to use. It's super cheap, really. It it costs nothing and it will last you forever because this you can spray paint through this as many times as you want. This will never fail you. And I always have it laying around. While I'm painting, I feel like I need some little bit of a texture here and there. Then I will grab this, just fold it up twice or three times or four times, depending on how big I want the pattern to be. And I just spray a little bit on there. Now the fifth stencil that I recommend are airbrush hand shields. I make these myself. I just cut them out by hand. There's nothing difficult to it. You can even recreate these if you want. Just freeze the YouTube video and recreate this pattern. This one as well. It's, the thing is that these are random curves and shapes. So for no matter what gill plate I have, no matter what lure, one shape on one of these stencils will about fit my gill plate. So that I can cover it. So I can give it a little bit of shadow or I can cover the rest. Um, attaching to the gill plate so I can only paint the gill plate and that I don't get any overspray on the body. It's just very useful and it will take your lure painting to the next level because you're adding details that not many lure painters add to their lures. And they're really easy to use. They do ask a little bit more control of your airbrush. This might be a little bit difficult for beginner airbrushers because it needs a little bit more control over your airbrush. But don't be afraid to try it because the sooner you will start practicing this, the sooner you will learn it. It's just practice makes perfect, that's all. And then I have a few more honorable mentions that I think is really important. And some stuff you can get really easily, other stuff you will have to find along the way. But for example, 
paper towels. I, I always have this laying around and I always use it as well. You just fold it up, you dip a little paint on there and you dip it on your lure. It just gives a random texture. It's really great for putting those base layers when you're painting or even finishing up a lure. It's just so easy and yeah, everybody can get paper towels. Also sponges are, just like paper towels, great for dipping in paint and dipping it on your lure to create these really nice textures and patterns and everything. You can also wipe it off a little bit with a sponge. Um, yeah, there's just so much you can do with a simple paper towel and a sponge. Random fabrics that you find <laughs> wherever you go. I think this uh, was around a laptop that we bought once and this fabric is really really like a fine mesh. As you can see, you can just see me a little bit through the camera. So when I spray paint through this, it becomes really cloudy and you can do these really nice and subtle colors by sp spraying through this kind of fabric. Keep an eye out for any kind of fabric or material that you just think I might be able to spray some paint through that. You should give that a try. And um, sometimes you find really cool materials. Also this, this is like a padding. Uh, when my girlfriend broke her knee and she got surgery, they padded her entire knee with this. Now, um, trust me, I waited until she was healed before, <laughs> before stealing this. Um, but after when she was healed and they took the padding off, I took some of the bits. And this again is really great for spraying paint through because it gives that kind of cloudy effect. Also the edge, if you want to do a soft line, you can just place it on the lure, spray over the edge and it's going to be a very soft line. It's not going to be any sharp lines. So yeah, just really cool to play with all these kind of materials. I don't remember where I got this. I think I got it from the underside of a chair or a couch, like it's stapled underneath to close the... Uh, the, the wooden frame. So this got a really interesting texture. It's got this diamond shaped pattern in there and when you spray it you can really subtle uh, give a little bit of a diamond pattern uh, for, for when you're trying to be a little bit creative and make something really special and stuff like this um, is great for that. So yeah always keep an eye out for fun fabrics stuff you can spray paint through because there is so much stuff you can use and create really cool lures. As always, I will leave a link in the description down below for all the stencils that I showed in this video today. If you got any questions, suggestions or you want to share some knowledge with the lure painting community, maybe some fun materials that you discovered to use for lure painting, share them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye!